sort of context? In general, um, that's right actually, not clinical trials, let's leave that out for a second, social interventions, the kind of thing that I've just been showing, like, you know, tax letters, um, or um, energy savings, things like that. So not clinical trials, um, not natural sciences, we're going to focus on, on these kind of social interventions. All right, who thinks it's ethical? Raise your hand. All right, everyone else is against it, or who thinks it's unethical to do? All right, one. Who is not decided yet? All right, it's not really an answer, but it's okay to talk. <laughs> um, so I think. I would like to have a couple of people just, I mean, it seems like you're one of the few people who sent out saying it's unethical, um, which by the way is cool because we always want to have somebody who like takes also the other side, and it's not an easy case to make on either side. So I'm really curious, um, maybe you want to go first, and then I'd like someone else to have a bit of a thought on why you think it's ethical. Both sides are hard. Sure. Well, I mean, look, you need to randomize to have valid results to make sure your experiment works, to make sure you can actually conclude with something and say that a policy is going to work. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, what you're doing is, especially with that tax experiment, or, or really anything like a welfare experiment, you're giving someone the opportunity to, um, to either get some extra benefit or not to incur some, some costs that another person wouldn't have. And there's no way of controlling for who that person is and isn't. So that is unethical. Okay. Um, I guess you, so the, the only thing that I can think of from that perspective is if it was like a welfare policy, like a government, for example, um, saying to people that they can pick up food stamps at an office versus mailing it to them directly, like some groups can get it more easily than others, so that would be the extra benefit to them. But at the same time, the government are already the people who draw the line of who receives food stamps or not. So they're already the people who are making those ethical decisions. So from that perspective, then maybe it's not necessarily more unethical than it would be otherwise. But in general, like you are playing God, which I think is right. beautiful. But, um, important. Yeah, yeah, okay. Don't worry, don't worry, it's fine. Like, who, who has a different, um, who wants to respond to that? Like, um, a thought on it or something that you think is different about it? Or maybe a, another reason why you think it's ethical? Yeah. I, I guess, like, I mean, we were talking about this, which, which kind of inter intervention, we're not talking about a, a treatment, like, you know, you're going to get this type of schooling and you're going to get that type of schooling and mm -hmm. you're still giving them a choice and, and it's not adding an extra cost, it's taking away a cost or a, trying to improve something. Let me right? follow up on that. So what if we talked about schooling? Let's say we randomized that. Would you now switch? Would you say you're now on the um, side of unethical? That's not something we should do? Well, we, we talked about that example too. I mean, if, if everybody's getting the normal schooling and you're giving somebody some kind of special better schooling, right. I think that's ethical because, you know, what, what their baseline is is still mm -hmm. the same, but you're giving them something better. If you made their schooling worse, then that would be yeah, unethical because you're taking away something. So it's a similar argument along the lines like, as long as everyone has, say, access to food stamps or access to at least some schooling, that's fine. Then. Um, although it's still maybe unfair and maybe something we should, you know, an unethical thing to do perhaps. Any other thoughts? Where's the, where's the unethical right now? So um, I was involved with an experiment that did just that, actually, oh. in Chicago, where they mm -hmm. had a school a schooling program I represented. Oh, yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, um, they you should be teaching his class. <laughs> John's like the expert on field experiments. Um, so we worked in a preschool that basically gave education away for free to parents of, like, from disadvantaged communities and low socioeconomic groups. And they were put into a lottery. So either they got to go to school for free for the year, or they got their kids to come to like a summer camp for like three months, or they had a party. <laughs> because at the end of the day, like they couldn't they, they couldn't give them nothing. So they have these parties for them, you know, like a few times a year when they give their kids like surveys to see how they're going. But it's sort of this really big like guilt complex of well, these kids didn't get anything. And yeah, we're testing them like every three months, like we test all the other kids and we have these parties for them, but at the end of the day, like they're not getting anything really. Like, it, I think it, actually what they did do is they compensated the parents for their time mm -hmm. um, and they also may have given them like start going to like I want to up on that. So yeah. what if we pay people? Is that more or less ethical now? <laughs> In that case parents, maybe third party is even more difficult. Let's just ask if we were to compensate participants. Better or worse in terms of the ethical question here? Like all of them or just people participating in the experiment? So both groups. Sorry? Both groups? Yeah, both okay. groups. That's it. All right. 
And what if someone gets a bit more because randomly assigned? Is that still okay? Well, I was about to say, like, it depends. So if you get an intervention, okay. if the group who gets, who doesn't get the free schooling, yeah. gets more money, yeah. then it's a different conversation. That if say that again. So if a school gets more money, so your example, basically, and um, more schooling or more access to opportunity, basically. Yeah, so if, if, what I'm trying to say is that yeah. if the financial incentive mitigate the difference yeah. in what the experimenter gives, ah, okay. then it's more ethical. I mean, that's what most institutional review board are trying to do. They're trying yeah. to decrease the difference between the two groups to make yeah. it acceptable. Right, right. Interesting. Okay, we're going to talk about the, the IRB. That's the ethics board that we're going to um, come back to quite a bit as well. Um, now, that's an interesting point. Any more points for why it's ethical? One last um, take on it. Yeah? I remember my mother. She was a teacher herself. And when I had trouble, like when she thought something is like not acceptable for another teacher, school, she would go and like make a fuss at school. I'm like, Mom, why do you do that? They don't like me afterwards. Like, why do you keep doing it? And she's like, you have to take the heat for the next kids. It's like, you know, maybe, yeah, they don't benefit. Like the, the control group doesn't benefit, but maybe they, they bring a benefit to the next generation, you know, like they're the ones that help the next generation. And if they opt in, like do we make them do it? No, they don't, right? They're part of, if it's with agreement and they know they're either going to be lucky or they're going to potentially help the community. I find it totally ethical and, you know, if you can give them some money for their extra time, that's even better. But for me, it's like, it's a service to community. And so because it, it out, the benefit you're talking about is actually for the greater good of the community, the not even your own. And so, it's opt-in, like you don't... So if you want to opt in, let's say you're just in this room, but we let you opt out. You should read the fine print though, we let you opt, opt out, but in principle you already opted in, in the experiment. Is it then okay or not? Oh no, uh, it's, just, it's the same, like, as long as you know. Okay. That you're you are aware, you're not like... What if you don't know? <laughs> Like were you gonna get some like are you, is is it worth it? Like are you gonna get the standard thing you would get anyway? Yes. So it control group for me it's totally fine. Ah, okay, okay. Like um, this even if they don't know, yeah. Okay, one last point and then. Yeah, now I was just gonna say, um, with the control with the group that didn't win the lottery, if there was no experiment in the first place, what would there what would they, where would they be? And I think they would be in the same situation. Mm -hmm. Um, not that I'm saying I'm for or against uh, it being ethical, I think it depends really on the topic. Uh, but I was just thinking about that situation, it, it, that it, if that randomization was not in play, then they would probably be in the same school, right? Um, Right, we're gonna, I mean, it's a very specific question, but yeah, so um, I'll quickly <laughs> go over a, a few points that you expertly mentioned here. One of them is, it's unfair to control group. It's one of the biggest concerns that comes up. Um, you see, giving a benefit to someone else. So, is this okay? Even if it's randomly assigned, is that an okay thing to do? We talked about briefly opt-in, opt-out. <laughs> That's also a big question. Mm -hmm. right? um, if you let people opt-in, maybe not as many people take part. In fact, maybe some of the people who would do this anyway um, would take part. And in fact, that um, leads to another problem, which is um, selection bias. I didn't bring it up here, but it's another problem. To think about if you let people opt in, process opt out. There are pre existing defaults, something you think about as well, like what is the default option you already get? It's very hard to think about a context where there's no default. And you should definitely read um, Klaus Sunsin's work on that, he's very big on these, these questions there. Um, should we pay participants? It's also a bit of an interesting question. Should we give people money to take part in our experiments? We do it all the time in our research in the lab here. Um, some people have advocated in, uh, doing it in experiments in the field as well, in organizations or in governments. It's another, maybe you're incentivizing some people more than others, right? Like, it goes a bit back to your hourly rate, um, when you mentioned before, like, if I make $2,000 an hour, am I going to take part in this experiment, if, even if I can make $10 an hour? Maybe not, right? And lastly, um, informed consent and debriefing. Like, who knows about this? Do we tell them this is um, research? And um, these are the difficult and big questions. They will, like um, you said, depend on the context sometimes. They will depend on your experiment. But most importantly, it will not just be your own decision. And that is why we have the um, Institutional Review Board, the IRB. That is why, um, as we go through the semester, I will be talking about these questions quite a bit. Um, I will also mention that if you want to run an experiment, any experiment at Harvard or outside, 
and while you're at Harvard, you need to do a, um, a training, an ethics training, and it's not very difficult, it just takes a bit of time. But you know, these are exactly the kind of questions they're going to ask. They want to know um, how you would respond to certain um, difficult situations ethically. But we, I'm going to leave you guys with one last interactive question for you guys, which is, um, and it, it will make your, uh, hopefully, a practical reason why I think um, randomization is ethical and very good to have. All right, I'm going to show you eight conditions. I'm going to do it fairly quickly. I know you guys have to run out at 7.30. <coughs> Control group. This is about signing up for donor. Um, by the way, if you have to leave at 7.30, you're welcome to go, obviously. This is going to take about two, maybe three minutes. Um, so this is an um, organ donor register. So basically, if you sign up for your um, you know, renewal for your driver's license every year, they ask you, do you want to join them? And they try different things. Control group, social justice. There's a norm, every day thousands of people see this page and decide to register. There's a norm, same message for the picture of people. There's a norm and the logo, it's actually quite a prominent organization, so we thought maybe the logo would be good to have. Or they tried um, loss aversion, three people die every day because there are not enough organ donors. Oops, sorry. Um, yeah, this is just a summary. Um, nine lives, the inverse basically of that, nine lives are trans saved or transformed. Um, as an organ donor, if you join. Um, this one is reciprocity, the idea that if you need an organ transfer, would you have one? If so, please um, join. And the last one is call to action, like getting you to actually um, sign up, even if you have this hypothetical belief, would you actually do it? And if you support um, this, turn it into support now, and you are into action. These are the eight conditions. Quickly pull out your phone and answer them, and then we're going to quickly review this, and I hope it will be a good way to end the class for today. Which one do you think, the question is, which one do you think would be most effective in getting people to sign up for the organ donor register? Let's just pull it over. So, let's see. No one thinks the control group is going to be best. <laughs> not a bad choice. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to compare it to you, so not a bad choice. Norm, um, plus the norm, 8%. Norm and picture, 16%. Um, no one thinks the logo is going to be any good. Um, three dies seems to be our um, best tester right now. Nine lives, the, the inverse of that. Reciprocity in third place, call to action 4%. All right, so um, I should say the, none of these are straw men. They all have pretty good reason to be there, right? Like a lot of literature gives a bit of evidence to why any of these should work. Um, three dies, loss aversion. I'm not surprised this often comes up as the, the one people um, prefer. Um, this one normally is a bit higher as well. Um, that one is a bit higher than normally. This one is a bit lower usually, so this is interesting. And reciprocity is also usually around there. All right, let's find out what actually happened. All right, so control, and now it's 2.3% that sign up on the website in the control treatment. Action, call to action, increased already by 0.5 percentage points. So these are significant because these are huge groups, right? So even a small percentage point um, increase is, is quite a bit. Next up, social norm. So just the message. Um, a couple of people thought that was going to happen. That's interesting. Norman logo actually does quite well. Um, and this is the logo of the company, remember? But no one thought this was going to do anything. Nine lives um, around here. Three die seems to be pretty good. So it's also, I think, the most popular among you guys. Uh, reciprocity does just a bit better. So now we're talking almost a percentage point increase with the reciprocity message. No, a few people also chose Norman Picture. And what I was going to say about that is... Uh, what? No? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. So that is, and I think um, I'm going to leave you guys with this thought. There's a good reason for lots of people, including uh, a very famous economist, when asked beforehand what he thought was going to win. That one, Norm, Picture, People, we're going to associate with this. Good reason to believe it's going to do something really good and work. Turns out, this is 0.1 percentage points lower than the control group, which means, sadly, some people would have been died because we would have implemented this kind of message. Now, here's the important part about this. Randomizing can save you from making bad decisions. We always talk about the upside. Now, we all agree we want upside for everyone. We have insight into all the things we want to roll out as a government or an organization, and they're all going to be upsides. Maybe we want to not randomize if we really think we know. But we randomize to save ourselves from making big mistakes. 
So if you ever talk to an organization that doesn't really want to do it, this might be one reason to think about it. Don't kill people by accident because we think you know what's going to be best. Even experts make these mistakes. And um, with that, please come to our, to our next class. Um, we're going to send out some readings if you're interested. And um, if you have any questions, I'm going to be around. So happy to take some, um, I guess, offline and also for you guys if you want to. Thanks for coming.